Goodbye, Daddy. A short story. Destruction. Pure and utter destruction. Stood tall in the centre of rubble which sprawled out for miles upon miles in all directions was the sorrowful skeletal remains of what once stood proud. Once a symbol of American ingenuity and prosperity turned to nothing more than a pile of debris. Sirens wailed, unrelenting in the background. Not much could be made out, as the dust from the disintegrated building had clouded the air like a thick fog clouding a sailor's vision at sea. It blistered and irritated the throat, leading to an incessant cough that stubbornly refused to leave. My eyes watered and ears rang as the desperate screams of the unfortunates reverberated across the thick, heavy, grey air. Lying there, unable to move, fragments of jagged steel or glass jutted out into my back, piercing me like a dagger. As I lay there, my frail breath gently caressing against the air, unable to see or to hear, my eyelids gradually turned to lead, sealed shut, like a gate stood strong and firm, incapable of opening. Only one corrupting thought clouded my mind, like a corrosive chemical eating away at my sanity. What would happen to her? Repeated in my head relentlessly, would she be okay? Destruction. Pure and utter destruction. I sat there in contentment and serenity. In the comfort of my rich crimson velvet armchair, my rear rang comfortably placed upon a silky soft cushion which felt like a fluffy cloud, gently embracing my backside. A freshly made bowling cup of tea by my side, steam emerging from its epidermal layer, dancing in memorising and exotic ways. My gaze was rigidly fixed upon the face of my gorgeous daughter, Olivia, as a smile began to materialise upon my face. I continued to lovingly inspect her face like a fine art museum, as she played with her barbies. Her luscious blonde hair gently caressed against her bright pink blouse as she furiously moved her head back and forth, while brutally crashing her already worn out barbies into one another. I could see her face light up with pure, unadulterated joy, her beautiful hazelnut coloured eyes glistened and twinkled. She grinned ear to ear as she stared at me in an approval seeking glare. I let out a hearty laugh. She looked back at me over her shoulder with a face like the Cheshire cat and continued to play. As I watched her play, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of pride and joy. She was growing up so fast, yet in this moment, she was still my little girl. I took a nice sip of my tea. It was brewed to perfection at just the right temperature. Ring, 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 ring. My phone rang ceaselessly. My heart sank and face bitter that I saw the caller ID. Boss. I stubbornly hesitated to answer, but eventually gave in to the incessant ringing. After exchanging pleasantries, my boss asked whether or not I'd be willing to fill in at work for an ailing colleague. After initially refusing, he made it all too clear it was not a request. In that case, we cannot ensure your future employment at our enterprise, he explained coldly. I gritted my teeth in frustration. I was taken aback. I felt an almost overwhelming urge to shout violent abuse at him, but I held my tongue. He had forced my hand. I had no other choice. I had to go into work. After dropping Olivia off at her grandmother's, I headed to work at the World Trade Centre. As I stumbled to my feet from the harsh and unforgiving floor, my heart raced and her spite. Smoke suddenly and without warning infested my lungs like a swarm of locusts, making it difficult to breathe. My ears rang with the sounds of chaos, screams, sirens and collapsing metals mixed together in an ear piercing cacophony. I could feel the heat of the flames and, this, and my skin prickled with fear. All around me was destruction, pure and utter destruction. My eyes darted around the infernal room, scanning for a fluorescent exit sign. As my eyes locked onto the emergency exit, I frantically dashed towards it whilst coughing endlessly, stumbling past the debris, a million thoughts rapidly swirling around in my head. Reaching the door, I swung it open with a commanding foot. Stood in front of me was an endless infernal blockade of flames, smoke and rubble. The heat emitting from the flames was unbearable. I took a step back, my skin blistered with heat. Beads of sweat continuously and rapidly fell from my forehead like a waterfall. I knew I had to find some way out. As I turned around and scanned the room, I realised all viable exits had been blocked off. My heart sank. Panic began to set in. I was trapped in this fiery purgatory. I closed my eyes and tried to concentrate on my breathing, but my head refused to stop spinning. My legs weakened, and 
vision blurred with tears of desperation. As I, as I hysterically sprinted around for help, my legs gave way to the weight of my body collapsing whilst coughing uncontrollably. My vision faded with every given second. His thoughts turned to his daughter Olivia and how he wouldn't be able to watch her grow up. He desperately wished to tell her one last time just how much he loved her and how much she meant to him and most of all to say goodbye. With all the remaining strength left within his body, he managed to whisper the words, I love you, Olivia. As he closed his eyes, the flames consuming him. Destruction, pure and utter destruction. As the rescue workers sifted through the rubble of the collapsed building, they found his lifeless body, burnt beyond recognition. The only thing that remained intact was his wallet, with a photo of Olivia tucked inside. The tragedy of his death was felt by many, but most of all by his daughter, who would never get to say goodbye to her father. Thanks for watching this video, this was a short story written by me, hope you liked it, and yeah.